This is Listen Up, Home Buyers, the only podcast offering home buying advice and tips from true buyer agents. And now, here's your host, Victoria Ray Henderson. Glenford Blanc is the president and CEO of Prospects, a home and commercial inspection company, and Glenn has a BA in architecture. He works in the greater Washington, D.C. and Baltimore area. I am so excited to have Glenn on Listen Up, Home Buyers. Thank you so much for joining me, Glenn. <laughs> You're welcome. Thanks for inviting us. Absolutely. I'm trying to remember the first time that we met, and it's when you and I were at a home in Laurel, and mm-hmm. it had a very steep roof, yep. and my client had asked to use you for the home inspection, and you came out with a drone to do that home inspection, and it just blew my mind. <laughs> <laughs> how, long, how long have you been in the inspection business, and how long have you been using drones uh, as part of the roof inspection? Let's see. Uh, well, we formed the company in 2003. Uh, my wife and I, and so that's 17 years. Um, uh, prior to that, it was, you know, in my architectural business, I did inspections as part of that, but not as an official home inspector. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the company is officially 17 years old. Okay. Mm-hmm. And tell me about the certification that goes, the, the background of what you need to do in order to be uh, as a licensed home inspector. Well, um, what the state requires is, to be honest, fairly limited. Huh. Um, once you pass a local classroom approved course, which takes a minimum of 72 hours, you then take the national exam. You pass the national exam and you apply for your license. You show proof of insurance and your license is in the mail. Mm. Um, it's a pretty bare bones process. Um, unfortunately, There are no prerequisites, um, so you don't have to come from any special background. Mm -hmm. Just be able to pass the course and pass the test. Yeah. This is why I find so many differences between the home inspectors that I end up working with. And it's also why, to be really honest with you, why you're the first one that I always try to schedule and call because- Yeah. Well, you know, as you know, we are exclusive buyer agents. We only work for home buyers and we really feel it's important for them to have all the information that they need to have because they're making the biggest financial decision of their life. You know, we could talk this whole show just about the things I've learned from watching you inspect a deck. <laughs> and I, I know that you've written a book about a deck, but to most people who are first time home buyers and sometimes even second time home buyers, they're not really. I guess the phrase is they don't know what they don't know. Mm -hmm. And so can you walk me through the process when you first get with someone and especially those first time home buyers, what do you do? Well, I think it's very important to set the proper expectations. Mm -hmm. Um, We could go on and on and on, you know, talking about the home inspection industry. And uh, because what's, what's different about us is, we don't just go out there looking for problems. You know, right. that, people tend to think that's what we do. And that, and it's understandable why they think that way. Mm-hmm. But as a company, um, that's not what we do. And so we start every inspection with a, a short conversation so that the customer understands what we're about. Mm-hmm. And what we try to do is say, look, we're trying to help you understand what you're buying, which is different from we're trying to find all the problems in this house. Right. Okay. So right. it's important to us as a company that you understand, okay, the roof on this house is not leaking, mm-hmm. but you have to keep in mind it's old, it's aging. It mm-hmm. may have two or three more years left, life left in it. And so as a buyer, you now you now have to start thinking, okay, I need to be budgeting for a, a new roof in the next couple of years. And to us, that's the kind of information we try to bring to the table as we assess the condition of a home. Right. The good parts, the bad parts, and everything in between. And right. So for us, a home inspection is an educational exercise so you understand what you're buying. Uh, because at the end of the day, the bottom line is everything we find can be fixed. Mm-hmm. Everything. The question is, how much is it going to cost, mm-hmm. and who's going to fix it? Right. You know, and that's and 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 if we prepare 
a detailed report that's clear, then the customer and their agent can sit down together and come up with a plan as to how they're going to handle what we have uncovered in the context of the transaction. Right. That's really what we're trying to do. What comes up quite a bit when I'm working with my buyers, and, and I try to do the same thing, but from a limited perspective, I'm, I'm not a home inspector, but I, I try to prepare them for what to expect before we have that home inspection. And one of the things, um, even today, I was out with a buyer who kept saying, this doesn't look like it's up to code. This home was built in 2003. It wasn't up to code the next month. You know, it wasn't up to code six months late. I mean, so can you can you explain what I'm talking about when when it's not a code inspection, it's a home inspection? Yeah. Well, f- f- first of all, in order for anyone to and let's talk about Maryland as an example. Okay. In order for anyone to be able to cite the code in the context of an inspection, they have to be licensed by the state to do so which gives them the permission to do that. That's first. That's number one. Okay. And your real estate home inspections and your real estate home inspector are not licensed to, to do code compliance inspections. That is a different licensing, different certification. Mm-hmm. And so, so, that's, so that's, num- that's number one. Uh, number two, the code changes every three years, roughly. Mm-hmm. Um, and the code is broken down in several sections. You've got plumbing, electrical, HVAC, structural. They're all pieces mm-hmm. which has come together to put this house together. And so the code only applies at the time that the house is built. After that, the code no longer applies. And so if you modify the house, then you modify the house to meet the current standards. Of that, that, that exact time when you At are the modifying time the house. time you're doing your modification, exactly. Right, right. And so, yeah, well, I mean, we hear this, we hear it a lot, you know, yeah. and we understand the question. We understand why the concern is there, but, you, it, but it's all about context. The right. context here, this is an older home, and therefore what was the code when the house was built mm-hmm. becomes the question. And so as home inspectors... It's impossible for us to know the codes at the time the house was built because, the, because it changes so frequently. Right. And because we cover the entire state, houses that are 100 years old yeah. to houses that are, you know, 100 you know, yeah. months old, right. a day old. We even do new construction inspections. Right. And so we, by, now, because we understand the code, Okay, we mm-hmm. can look and say, you know what, this may not be up to code today, but at the time that it was built, that was the code. So give me one or two examples of what you're talking about, no, just so e- that somebody who's yeah, listening can, sure. can understand. Sure. The easiest one is, G, let's say, GFI. GFI, that's what I was GFI. thinking. It's right. a very common, common one. And I see this all the time. Um, the GFI wasn't introduced until the 70s. And tell what a GFI is first. A GSI, it's a out, special outlet, which gives you it's a special safety device built in so that if you're in close proximity to water or your hands are wet and you touch something electrical and try to plug it in this outlet, then that outlet will trip. And it has those little buttons on it. It has that, those little yeah. buttons on it. Most right. people will right. recognize them. You see them in bathrooms a lot. Right, exactly. Okay, but what people don't, what you have to understand is it was not introduced to bathrooms, to kitchens, outdoors, garages, and unfinished basements at the same time. It mm-hmm. was a progression. Mm-hmm. So, so when it first came out, it was bath, bathrooms before kitchens. Kitchens came later. Then garages were added. And then eventually, now we want GFIs in so many different places. Well, right. if your house was built in the 1950s, Right. GFIs didn't exist in the 1950s. Mm-hmm. They didn't come about until the 1970s. Mm-hmm. And so if the house was never updated, then that 1950s house will not have a GFI in it. Right. Okay. Now, right. if someone purchased the 1950s house, did you know, did a renovation and a flip, or as the as we call them, mm-hmm. um, and you update the kitchen, then you have to and and not only update the kitchen by changing the cabinets, no. Mm-hmm. By if you modify the electrical system in mm-hmm. any way, you then at that point have to bring it up to code. Right. 
Okay. And and that and that's that's part of what um, we do on on our side, where yeah. we will see a remodel, a remodeled kitchen, bathroom, whatever, and and we actually will see if they pulled permits yep. to do mm-hmm. it. Um, we once saw a raised roof um, in a home, and we went up to kind of try to see. Well, wow, they raised the roof, and you know, my husband Marshall has a background in construction. He says, you know, I don't think they have enough uh, support here, and it turned out they had raised the roof and never pulled a permit. Yep. And so that was a house our buyers didn't get. <laughs> but uh, you touched on something, and I hope you have so much fun doing this that you come back again, because there's a whole bunch of stuff I want to ask you. But you talked about new construction. Remind me if I forget. I want to hit on that for a second. But back to code, one of the things, again, that comes up with us, we have sometimes people will come by and say, hey, um, our porch wasn't up to code, and somebody came by and and told us that it all had to be redone. And our home inspector didn't tell us about the railings on the porch or the, you know, whatever it is. And so, yep. um, because there are people who will try to basically take your money and use mm-hmm. that code, that language. Absolutely. To take advantage. And, 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 and what I, well, the first question I ask is, when was the work done? Mm-hmm. What code was in effect the date and time that they applied for the permit? Until you can answer those two questions, you don't know which code to apply. Right. And so I, I've heard it from real estate agents. They say, well, you know, it's up to code at the time that it was built. I'm like, okay, when was it built? Mm-hmm. Well, I'm not sure. Well, how do you know it's <laughs> up to code then? Right. And which code are you referring to? They shouldn't be talking about code anyway. <laughs> That's exactly. not our expertise. Exactly. Um, that is not to say if we suspect something may be a code issue that we will not say anything. Right. I want people to get the wrong impression. Okay. The idea is we have enough knowledge to say, you know what? There's something suspicious here. Okay. And so if I see something that I know this, this looks, it looks like it was done within the last 10 years. Mm-hmm. Well, within the last 10 years, the code was X. Right. I'm going to ask, okay, when was this? That, and I'll put that question in the report. You need to look into this because from the evidence that we have, there may be an issue. And that's how we tend to approach these things. But you can't just say the code is this, the code is that, right. unless you know exactly when the work was done. Mm-hmm. And nobody knows half half the time. Right, right. But we know enough to to ask the right questions. And I know enough less than you to to <laughs> kind of look at things and be a little suspicious. But then I always say, well, we've got to have a professional inspect this. But you know, this looks weird to me because right. I've been in hundreds, maybe thousands of homes. But right. um, yeah, well, it's like an inspection I did today. I did this morning. Okay, it's a night. The house was built in the 1940s. Mm-hmm. Okay, and. The electrical service to the house hasn't been touched. It's the original 100 amp service. Wow. But inside the home, new kitchen, mm. new bathroom, new outlets, the panel's been replaced, and nowhere in the house is there an inspection sticker. Oh, boy. The water heater has been replaced. The f- I'm like, where are the inspection stickers for all of this? Yeah. So clearly, something has happened. So you know, I put wrote it up in the report. I said, like, you need to reinvestigate this. And some of the work wasn't up to code anyway. <laughs> you know, you can tell it was the work was done within the last 12 months. Mm-hmm. So, but I don't need to say the work is not up to code. I say, mm-hmm. hey, look, this is wrong. We need to see the permits for this. And how, uh, when you have 100 amps going to a house with all that stuff redone, yeah. uh, that's, that's going to trip that's, that's going to really whole, cause that's problems. a whole that's a whole other question exactly yeah. which is what i said to the customer yeah. you know this is this house was not built for the load they have they have an air conditioner which was not there when the house was built they got a brand new furnace they've added a microwave and a, the house was not built with a microwave yeah. 1940s no so there's more demand on the electrical system but they haven't upgraded the electrical system doesn't add up mm-hmm. you know i think it's it's um the biggest challenge we have is far too many customers call us at the very last minute. Mm. You know, I like to tell folks, bring your inspector on board early. Get to know them. Get samples of their... Re- I mean, there's so much we could talk about. Mm-hmm. Uh, and get to better understand the industry so you can set the right expectations. Mm-hmm. And 
don't be afraid to ask questions. Right. You know, try your best to be at the inspection and ask questions. No question is too silly. No question is too little. Ask as many questions as you can because it's important that you find out what am I about to buy here right. so that you can go to the negotiating table with, your, with the assistance of your agent with your eyes and ears wide open because you cannot negotiate you know, if you don't know what you're talking about. Right. And yeah. to me, that is the central purpose of the home inspection is to arm you and your agent with sound information so that you can make an informed decision as to what you want to do, not what right. the inspector wants to do or your right. agent wants. It's what you want to do with this information. Because like I said earlier, everything we find can be fixed. Right. Everything. Yeah. You know, the question is, how much are you willing to give and take? Mm -hmm. And that's some, you know, a discussion you have with your agent right. and come up with a game plan. So a, a good report should help you um, under, better understand the house and be able to negotiate from there. Some things you'll find, hey, I can do it myself. No, no big deal. Other things, you know, is things you want to talk about with the, uh, with the other party. Right. But, um, you know, that's, that's what we try to do. Yeah, and I, I think it's also important for, for any homeowner, or uh, rather home buyer, to understand wherever you are in the country listening to this, that the home inspector works for you. So it's your choice who you hire and you ask questions like like Glenford said. One of the things I always make sure that I ask is, how do you turn the, where's the main water valve to this uh -huh. house? Um, you know, how do you shut off the hose bibs? Try to uh, tag it all so people understand where those things are, when they need them, because you always need them in an emergency. Oh, absolutely. And this is why we, with our philosophy when it comes to home inspections, is people often ask us, well, what are you looking for? I, we tell them, look, I'm not looking for anything. Mm -hmm. We look at everything. It's a different yeah. mindset. Right. Okay. We train our inspectors. We have, a, we have our own internal training program, which takes weeks, far exceeds what the state, the state requirements. And it's very in-depth and it's very detailed. And it's for a reason. Because the people that hire us are looking for advice. They're looking for information. And like you said, in order to make an informed decision on this big purchase they're about to make. Mm -hmm. And so what we deliver should help them along that path. If your inspection and your inspection report cannot help you make an informed decision, then in my mind, you really didn't, you didn't get a whole, you get a whole lot. You know, yeah. some reports, are, some inspectors are just, some many reports are just too technical. It's mm -hmm. way over the head of the, of the customer. Well, why would you pay for something you don't understand? Yeah, no, it's, I, I've seen reports like that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you need to understand it. Yeah, it's going to be your house. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be your decision. That's right. Well, Glenford Blanc, the president and CEO of Prospects, a home and commercial inspection company in the greater Washington, D.C. and Baltimore area. Glenn, thank you so much for joining me. It's really been a pleasure. Uh, you're welcome. You've been listening to Listen Up, Home Buyers, the only podcast offering home buying advice and tips from true buyer agents.